Hello guys, part number two of this series of video on OAuth and OpenID Connect. On the part one, I explain what is OAuth, what is OpenID Connect, the link between both, and to understand the workflow, okay, the grant flow. And I presented the authorization card grant flow. So now, let's try to understand how an APM can validate an access token. Okay, so in previous video, I managed to get an access token by exchanging an authorization card for an access token. So from now, let's try to validate this access token in APM, okay? So we continue with exactly the same, the same example. Uh, I still have my OpenID Connect debugger as a client to get an authorization code, so let's do it now, okay? Uh, if you have questions or please go back to the part number one. So I still have the same authorized URI, I have my same client ID, uh, and then I request an authorization code. Let's do it. Select my account, I consent, I have an authorization code. Okay, now my postman and request to Google Authorization Server, request one access token for authorization. So now, perfect, I have an access token now, here, okay. And we have more or less one, one day, okay? Uh, so, one hour, sorry, we have one hour. So, now the goal is to validate this token uh, in APM as a resource server. The use case is pretty simple. I have, a, I have an application on-premises and I want to validate access to the application uh, by APM as an old and OpenID Connect resource server. So let's go back to big IP. This is a 14.1. Okay. The 14.1 is pretty good for OpenID Connect and host because we had we added a lot of uh, improvement in the way to configure OpenID Connect and hosts. We added new authorization server. I'm going to show you. So the 14.1 is, is nice, but 31, 31 is good, good enough. So in access, it's very easy. Okay. You go to access menu, federation, and here you can see three menus for OAuth OpenID Connect. The first one is joint. If you remember from the part one of the video, an access token can be either opaque or joint. From AdReady, it's a joint. From Google, it's opaque. From others, most of the time, it's opaque. But they are moving to joint for many reasons because the joint is readable, decodable, and the opaque is non-decodable, okay? So here, we're gonna not choose joint validation because my access token here is an opaque, okay? And the ID token is not used by the resource server. If I remind you, the ID token is used by the client to present your name, last name, and your picture in the application. So we don't care about the ID token right now but we care about OpenID Connect to get some information regarding the user. So from here, what the, what the menu I want to go is OAuth resource server. Step one, create a provider. Pretty easy, F5 created for you. Several providers, okay, Ping, Okta, Google, Facebook, F5, Azure, Azure B2C, Azure version two, Azure uh, AD, normal standard one, uh, version one. So I created a provider based on Google. Okay, so you just select Google, give a name, and click on Discover. That's it. So if we do it now, you, go, you click on Create, give a name, select the kind, the type, it's Google. And as you can see, the Google has a discovery. OpenID URI. You click on Discover and we are good. What this Discover button does is download the keys from Google uh, if I want to validate 
the open ID connect token, the ID token, in case I am a client. It's not my, it's not my, uh, not my situation today. Okay. So with discover, we discover the all the URIs, all the keys uh, from from the authorization server. So I did it for Google here. Then step number two, create a node server. So here, pretty simple. You specify your name, the mod, client, resource server, or boss. The next video, part number three, will be on both. So the big IP will be the client, so we will ask for tokens, and will be the resource server. It will validate the tokens. So part number two, I already I already have my token here from Postman. So I'm a resource server, the type, the old provider that I created step before. I need a DNS reserver. Why? Because the token will be validated toward Google authorization server. So I need to uh, need to reserve the authorization server for Google. And here, as you can see, it's not mandatory. It's not blue. But depending the authorization server, Google, Facebook, AdReady, Ping, uh, sometimes an ID is needed. If it is needed, it's a client ID. Okay, so if I get back to my to my applications, okay, uh, this is a client ID. So for Google, the client, the resource server ID is a client ID. If you don't know, don't put anything. Make a test, check APM logs and in APM logs, you're gonna see the log. Okay, the resource ID is missing. So it's pretty simple, okay? And it will tell you why. So I created the, the root server and that's it. I don't need more, okay? It's pretty simple. So now what I'm gonna do, I go to my policy. Uh, I just added a message box to see a message if it works, okay? I, I don't want to add a backend server, I don't care. So if I see the message box, it means I pass and now for all there are two boxes, two agents. One is host client, only used if APM if has a client. It will be in the next video, part number three. Here I already have an access token, so I am a resource server. I just need to validate the token. To validate the token, its name old scope. And I told you there are two kinds of access token, opaque and joint. The joint, as I told you, is auto sign and decodable. So we don't have to make any request to the authorization server to validate the token. The APM can do it by itself. The, the APM had the keys from the discovery process, so the, the APM can validate the token that's why that's why there is an internal validation okay so internal is only for joy token it's only for Azure AD in my demos okay so Google is opaque opaque needs to communicate with the authorization server to validate the access token so I select my server that I just created and by default F5 created the different request URI to make this control okay so if I have Google it's this one and open ID this one to explain validating validating a token just means uh, does this uh, token okay okay that's it then I can request a scope if you remember from the previous video, the COP is please provide me with some information about the user. But the COP is proprietary to the to the authorization server. Google, Facebook, other don't use the same scopes. So in my in my request, the scope was profile. So I should see only first name, last name, and picture. This is a profile scope from Google. So I should have some information about this. And if I need more, 
And if OpenID Connect is enabled in authorization server, I can make a second request to get more information, like provide me some information regarding the groups or stuff like that, okay? So here I should have more information. I know that in the profile in Google, we have uh, only the email address in the profile, and if we need the name and the last name, it's inside OpenID Connect user info. Okay, so this is done by default by five. You don't have to specify because it's a known URI, so we did it. So I save and I apply. So now let's switch to Postman. Okay, so this is the access token that I just received from Google when I changed the code. To an access token okay i provided the code and i get the access token so from now let's go to this new request i just put make a get to my vip with this policy assigned and then i need to specify an auto authentication when we use an access token is named a bearer let's do like that okay i just send And I reserve confirmation. So here it means I am to the message box. Congratulations, it works. Okay, this is a message here. If I go to the big IP and have a look on the active session, my active session is here. Okay, I can see a lot of information. So the user info is here. The user info is the open ID user info. Okay, this is a second request where we request information regarding myself. So the first request is can you validate this token? And the response is yes, no. And then the second request is the scope and the user info. So for every request, you have to present the access token. So here you can see for the user info, my family name, given name, local, English, the name, and so on. And you have my picture as well, okay? So you copy paste this somewhere, you should see my my profile picture. This is information from my point ID collect. For the rest, you can see the scope, okay? So inside the scope, we have some information as well. So it depends on authorization server, and here we have pretty much the same information, but from user info again okay so very very easy very useful as you can see so this is just as a resource server and in the next video i'm gonna explain how to combine client and resource server on the same apm for a different use case